Hey there, everyone. Sorry about the longer wait there. My name is Noe. And I'm Caleb. It's nice to see you all back here on the CouchCast podcast. Hopefully uh, we got a good show for you today. Yeah, according to the thumbnail, we'll be talking about the Star Wars movie. Uh, we had some comments on our first video that actually said that they wanted to see Star Wars in our ranking of the film. Films. <laughs> so that'll be the first thing that we're doing today, but probably going to get off track at some point and talk about something else. That's usually how it goes, right? <laughs> yeah. Professionals. Professionals. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get right into it then. Oh, actually, just kidding. <laughs> JK, uh, we actually created a new logo. Uh, so we're not using those same couch PNGs that we find off of Google stock images. Um, uh, we made it last night, I think. Yeah. Last night for us. Last night for us, which doesn't matter nights. for you listeners. But <laughs> um, love you to death, though. Um, let us know what you think of it. It's a. Uh, we think it turned out very well. Very well. <laughs> very well. It's like a. Um, it's like the joke we were talking about of the the Siamese. That's probably not the right word for it, but the. Oh, like symbiote, couch human. Anthropomorphi anthropomorphized couch. I I don't think that was right. <laughs> I don't think it was right either. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Hopefully, Caleb's. Uh, we did a bit of a check and see if Caleb's audio is better than the uh, than last time. Again, sorry about that, but you know the humor is all there. But uh, yeah, I guess back to our scheduled program, of course. <laughs> so, ranking the Star Wars movies, do you want to go worst to best, or best to worst? Uh, I feel like worst the best is probably easier. Kind of see what the, kind of get that final drum roll for the for the number one pick. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, and in this in this ranking, uh, Caleb and I both agreed upon that we will be including, um, the Clone Wars movie. I think was. Yeah, the Clone Wars movie. And. Rogue One Solo. Yeah, Rogue One and Solo. It won't just be the Skywalker saga. Alrighty, uh, Caleb, do you want to take it away as the um, as the first uh, ranking of your personal favorite Star Wars films? <laughs> uh, well, starting with Dead Last uh, comes Episode Eight. Uh, did not like it at all. It's the only one that I can't go back and watch whenever. Did you I've like anything about it though? Like not one scene. <sighs> I'm trying to remember all the scenes from it. Like one of my favorite scenes. Like I, I like to say that there's no like, like I don't hate any Star Wars movies, but like I gen I genuinely dislike some of them. <laughs> Um, but for episode eight, I actually like, uh, spoiler warning ahead for all of these, by the way, <laughs> um, I genuinely liked, uh, the Yoda scene in episode eight and, uh, it's like kind of a nod back to failures, the greatest teacher and which he told Anakin, I believe, and a nod to, that uh, that pr apprentices um, overcome what the masters can't. Like the masters will always be able to teach the apprentices something, but the uh, but you know they'll always become better because they're 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 you know themselves. Yeah, that was a good scene. Um, I don't know what exactly it was about the overall movie that I didn't like. Um. There's just, I can't even explain why I don't like the movie. It's just my least favorite Star Wars movie. doesn't mean that I don't like it. Right. Because I like all the Star Wars movies, even the Clone Wars movie. 
Yeah. Which not a lot of people can say. <laughs> so I guess that brings us to your number seven then. Or no, wait. Math. You're you're twelve. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> your next your next one, sorry. <laughs> Do you, do you not want to go back and forth? Do you want to go my list, then your list? Um, I was thinking we could just do it all in one consecutive order. Alright, so my 11th pick would be probably Solo. That's a fair pick. I liked Solo. Um, There were some parts that I didn't like, specifically how they explained how he got his name because i don't think that was really asked for or needed to understand the character yeah uh the ending scene was great Mm -hmm. um wasn't too sure why they were implying that uh lando had a romantic relationship with his droid yeah that was a little funky don't don't know if that came up in the originals. I don't remember it coming up in the originals. I don't think they ever... The only sort of romantic antics that Lando gets up to is flirting with Leia while Han's, you know... <laughs> yeah. I, that part, I didn't really understand why they put that in there. I thought it was funny, but just didn't understand the reasoning for it. Right. Take a drink here. Take a drink. Sorry. Um, I'm at 10 now. My 10th pick for Star Wars would be... Episode 7. Man, you put Episode 7 way higher. <laughs> so, so... You actually then you think that episode seven is better than solo and and episode eight then? Yes. Without a doubt. Yeah, I I liked the fight scene between Kylo and Ray. Um there were some funny scenes as well throughout the movie. And overall I think it just had better directing than Solo or The Last Jedi. Both of which were made by uh, Ryan Johnson, I believe. Uh, uh, Solo... Solo was directed by Ron Howard. Ron Howard. Yes. He must have been like the one-time deal then. I know uh, 8 and Rogue One, I believe, are both by Ryan Johnson. Uh, Rogue One was directed by Gareth Edwards. Oh, then I'm just wrong. (laughs) (laughs) And now we're going to get into some controversial stuff. Oh, boy. Because my next pick would be episode four. That's fair. I said that quietly because I know there's some people that... uh, (laughs) <laughs> Will not take too kindly to me putting episode four so low. That's fair though. I, I there just wasn't enough in the actual movie for me to enjoy it as much as the others. But it's the first Star Wars, you know, like the first, you know, OG. I, yeah, I understand that much, and I, I love the movie. It's just not my go-to pick if I'm gonna sit down and watch a Star Wars movie. Yeah, you know, that's... I don't think I ever really go out of my way to watch Episode Four either. I think it's more of just like, okay, I'm watching Star Wars in order. It's time for Episode Four, And you just kind of are like, okay. <laughs> it's mutual. It's like right in the middle. It's a kind of the crossroads, but sorry. If I'm going to sit down and like watch every piece of star wars from chronological order like start with one two then watch the clone wars movie the clone wars tv show obviously i'm gonna watch it yeah 
But like, if I'm just going to sit down and decide to watch a Star Wars movie, it's most likely not going to be episode four. Yeah, I, I don't think, like I said, I don't think I've ever sat down. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to watch episode four today. Episode six, like Star uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in my list. But keep going. What what's what's after episode four? So, after episode four, I would put episode two. Okay. That's your more controversial one. I mean, I know people people really bash on that movie. We need to pause for a second. <laughs> episode two. Probably more than a lot of Star Wars fans. Just because growing up, that was the only one that I had on DVD. Okay. So that was the one that I watched all the time. I enjoy the storytelling aspect of it. I mean, when you're a kid, too, you see you see um, episode two and you're just blown away. Like, oh, yeah. as a kid, you see a bunch of people, a bunch of Jedi uh, just going out. The Battle of Geonosis in that movie, uh, you're running that's out. The best part in the movie. Yeah, and and you go out. You you just take that in your head as a kid, and you're just running around with sticks, pretending you're a clone. You know, blasting away droids. Oh yeah. <laughs> the games that tie in with the Battle of Geonosis, like um, Republic the, Commando, I think. Yeah, Republic Commando. G- going through the Battle of Geonosis as a commando unit was awesome. Yeah. I mean, the first uh, Battlefront 2 2005, right? Or 2004. Yep. You know, that the, the original BF2. Yes. Um, you got... You're telling from the, the tale of a 501st clone trooper. And your first encounter, uh, or first mission that you do, you're on Geonosis. You're on the Battle of Geonosis. All the way up think, to Order 66 and beyond. I think that the Battle of Geonosis has been extremely well documented throughout games, legends, and canon. Yeah. Um, as well as being an attack of the clones. Yeah. And it's still such a great, like, I won't say you can add more to it, but if from any point of view, it is still fun to, to see. Yeah, and... I mean, Camino, seeing Camino, yeah, in the movie was nice. Oh, Camino's great. Camino's one of my favorite planets in the Star Wars universe. Also, the movie features the greatest sound ever made, being the seismic charge. Oh, <laughs> yeah that 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 nuke bomb in space is just something. It, it is just, amazing. Yeah. Just hearing that sound is amazing. For all then, of you who don't who don't know that sound, I'd pause your podcast and go look up the seismic charge from two hours. The two hour version. Just watch. The yeah, the two, the whole two hour version. You if you if you video you listeners, you know you're you're still watching the screen and you need something to look at. Just look at just listen. Just look at that. Over and over again. It's a beautiful thing. And I mean, spoilers for The Mandalorian, if you haven't caught up the entire way, seeing it in The Mandalorian as well. Oh, it was amazing. Amazing. I was so happy having the episode where Boba dropped the seismic charge on the two TIE fighters. That that shows something else, too. It's a, a Dave Filoni, right? He's in charge of that. Uh, Dave Filoni did a couple episodes, I think. Yeah, I was going to say. He's not the whole thing, but he does... Yeah. There were a couple different directors. Uh, I know it's for, like, select episodes is who's in charge. Yeah. I know that Dave Filoni did the one with Ahsoka. Yeah, he was... He was definitely a part of that one. But for yeah. for those that nod, you know, like the directors that nod back to other Star Wars, that is... Not only is it good for the fans, but it makes the whole thing, you know... I don't want to say realistic because it's Star Wars, but like... It's, uh, like, 
Boba, who saw his dad do the same trick against the Jedi, just did the same trick 25 years later. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And the, the sound, again, is just... Phenomenal. Amazing. I don't know how they created the sound, what they used, what they changed within the sound itself to make it sound like that, but I love it. Rumor has it, nod to episode two, is that Paul Bunyan actually just clapped his legs together and it, it created yeah, the sound of the sick old thighs the the thunder lumberjack thighs and that's what that's what spawned the seismic charge noise <laughs> and george lucas just stood in the woods and just was in awe absolute awe i i think that's actually canon yeah yeah they talk about it in the holiday special if you haven't seen that <laughs> which we don't blame you if you haven't <laughs> um, <laughs> i've never seen the holiday special and i've seen everything star wars i have don't <laughs> oh, um, man. speaking of the movies that aren't in the actual skywalker saga what about the ewok movies oh my god caravan of courage I think um, I saw the Ewok movie once, one of them once, and that was when you were watching it. Yeah, that was like one of the few DVDs that I had of Star Wars. Because when we were younger, when we were kids, when we were just youngsters, we, you know, DVDs were kind of hard to come by. It, it, they were kind of newer. Also, we didn't have money. Yeah, we were children. I mean, we, we still don't have money, but... <laughs> Now we have I mean, we weren't to, like, watching like Disney Plus and Hulu and shit. Yeah, we weren't watching like laser discs. But I remember, like, you know, you went down to the the store. You go like a like a Blockbuster or whatever you have. Go get yourself a VHS, and then they sometimes had DVDs. Um, yeah. yeah, we're we're we were born in just the right time to still know what VHSs are and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I have vhs is from when i was a when i was a kid yeah um, i remember watching episode one on vhs yeah i was i have i was just about to say i have phantom menace to this day still in vhs with the original covering and everything yeah mm -hmm. uh i also i also got um the original trilogy uh, as a vhs i think from a friend like one of my family's friends i i believe i think they just had it and they were like well i mean it's vhs so i mean i'm like here you can have this yeah i'm like i was i was you know because that's the original cuts you know that's the same cgi as it was back when what the 70s when it came out so i was ecstatic <laughs> oh yeah i go ahead sorry <laughs> So, the next one would be the Clone Wars movie. Okay. Which most people would put that dead last. Okay. At least most people that I've talked to. I'm one of those people. Longer. It's not dead last, but it's definitely lower. I enjoyed the movie because I didn't watch it until after I had watched the Clone Wars, so I'd already fallen in love with Ahsoka's character and the art style so i went in with a different mindset than people who didn't watch the clone wars beforehand and i was quite the opposite quite the opposite i went into that movie right from the get-go right when it came out i remember it was a cartoon network special um i sat and watched it um you know, you see Anakin and Obi-Wan and this new clone, you know, of Anakin's Legion and Obi-Wan's Legion, and you get more you get more uh, interaction, which is great. Amazing. And then Ahsoka comes on. I mean, this is not me saying that I dislike Ahsoka now, because I do. I love Ahsoka's character. But back then, when you were just a kid, and you see someone kind of just, like, making fun of Anakin, you're like... Dude, he's gonna kill you later on. Like you're just sitting there rooting. <laughs> he's gonna end your existence. That is Darth Vader you're talking to. 
watch spoiler it. Spoiler alert. Uh, so, yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert if you haven't watched. In case watched. you didn't know that Anakin is Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Been living under a rock your entire life. We're sorry that we just spoiled that for you. Sorry, I should have dropped the spoiler. So, sorry that we didn't put a spoiler warning for a movie that came out in 1980. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So what's after your Clone Wars uh, movie? Episode 5. Oh, now you're really going to be controversial. I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't enjoy the originals as much as everybody else did. There just wasn't enough action for me. Okay. I, I don't get me wrong. I still love the originals. Right. I love the sequels. I love the prequels and the spinoffs and whatever else they add to Star Wars. I will love. But yeah, episode five. I just didn't get two into episode five right i uh i really enjoy um episode five i think introducing boba fett is like just great his cloud city is great lando's great hoth excuse me so hoth was great yeah cloud city all great locations I yeah. totally agree with that. And Yoda, Dagobah. I I do like episode four and five and six, like I've said. But they just they they weren't my cup of tea. But we did grow up on the prequels too. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, and we'll find out later in the rankings. But what after, comes what comes after after episode five for you? I would say, and this is where people are not gonna like my list. Episode nine. I'm not gonna like your list. I actually really enjoy episode nine. <laughs> I, I enjoy episode nine, and I mean I'm close to the top of the list. So right, right. Um. It's not the greatest Star Wars ever made, but it's not a terrible movie. I wish that the final scene would have been used differently, and I will put a spoiler warning for this one since it's newer. Yeah. Um, I wish they would have had some sort of uh, Force Ghost behind Rey instead of just the actors saying lines. Yeah, yeah, against Palpatine. I think that would have made the scene a hundred times better. I think like, so you, as well. If you've seen the edits of people that did that and put the Force Ghost behind Ray helping her. Yeah, it's great. That, it looks those amazing. Those gave me goosebumps. It's, they're nuts. They really are. Um, yeah, episode nine, it, it's, it, I guess you're right. It, I know a lot of people don't like it. You know, they genuinely just aren't a fan of it. Which I understand. Just aren't fans of the sequels in general, right? They're gonna go in episode nine hating it no matter what. Yeah, I went into it thinking of it as it's Star Wars, and you get to see it in theaters, and that's something that a lot of people, you know, I never I, thought in my life that I would ever see another Star Wars in theaters, never. Yeah. Until I, episode seven came out, and I was like, "I saw episode seven in theaters probably six or seven times the week it came out." Day uh, day it came out, I went with me and the boys, and and we we watched it, and I was like, "Man, my childhood is just like it's just I'm uh, it was such a rush of emotions." Oh man, always going to be dear to my heart. Uh, Rogue Star One, Wars, Dep Phantom Menace, Revenge of the Sith, and Return of the Jedi left. Yeah. Uh, so after Episode Nine, Rogue One. Okay. 
That's uh, fair. Rogue One was an amazing spinoff. Yeah. I I enjoy Rogue One quite a bit. Aren't we getting a spinoff show for... Uh... Yeah, um, Cassian Andor, but I think yeah. the show is just called Andor. And that is the male rebel that um, Jyn Erso, spoiler alert, is like uh, dating in that um, movie. Um, yeah. One of the first uh, rebels you see besides Jyn and uh, K2. I enjoyed Rogue One. I'll occasionally go and sit and watch it. It is one of the longer Star Warses. You know, what really ties that movie together, though, is the nostalgia with the Death Star. And, of course... The very the, last scene. The Vader scene. That leads directly Vader's into... going and destroying every single rebel in that hallway. With little to no effort. Oh, pfft. Yeah. Just decimates everybody in his path. Which, the directors of The Mandalorian, spoil, spoiler alert, um, nod to in the last episode of season two with Luke's hallway scene. Mm-hmm. Which is just amazing how intertwined the Off universe top, really is. But Luke's scene in Mandalorian, I think they did a great job uh, youngifying mark hamill back to original i cried i cried when luke came (laughs) i was in tears of joy oh it was amazing It it was just something else another one of those moments where you just are filled with emotion yeah so what comes after rogue one this is going to be the one that definitely nobody agrees with. Episode one. The Phantom Menace. I loved The Phantom Menace. I don't care what anybody says. I loved it. I watched this movie on VHS. I've seen it on Disney+. Plus. I've seen it on DVD. And you love Jar Jar. <laughs> I hate Jar Jar. Darth Jar Jar, I should say. Yeah. Yeah correct title (laughs) the real phantom menace (laughs) the the original sith lord (laughs) (laughs) he was alive back in the old republic days he was he he was behind it all the real sith emperor um Uh, i'm assuming though one of the biggest things is duel the fates as a soundtrack piece john williams one of john williams greatest pieces and I, Darth listen, Maul. That's on my Spotify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I jam out to Duel of Fates. I understand that, though. And there's some really cool remixes of that, of Duel of Fates. And um, it fits to almost any scene. Yeah, every scene in Star Wars can be enhanced by Duel of Fates. At least, especially lightsaber battles. Oh, extremely. Oh man, I like uh, nod to uh, episode three, um, when they use the same duel of the fates when Palpatine and Yoda fight, mm-hmm. which the 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 piece as it is also has its own significance within the name and how dramatic it is. Like for duel of the fates, it it and it it started the fate of Maul and Obi Wan. And Obi-Wan being presented as a Sith Slayer, which hasn't been around for thousands of years. Yeah. And then again, when Yoda and Sidious are fighting, uh, synchronized with Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight. um, But uh, when they fight, it's the, it's the... if if Yoda was to was to kill Palpatine in three, it would mean that the Sith would end. Besides Anakin, of course, at the time, um, but the Sith Master would officially be dead. The, the the Dark Lord behind the Clone War would be dead. But of course, you know, because there's the originals, Yoda of course fails. But there's still that significance with it all. One of the greatest things to come out of Episode One, I feel is the soundtrack and maul as a character maul yes maul as a character i love 
I wish they would have used him a little bit more in episode one. But I mean, he did get a better telling of his character throughout the Clone Wars. And I mean, even his cameo in Rogue One. Yeah. Which nothing has came from yet. And Rebels. Star Wars Rebels, too. And he was... Rebels. Yeah, he's... And here we hope for Kenobi, too, in the, the, the Disney Plus uh, season. He's going to have to be in Kenobi. Oh, I can't wait. I hope. I hope. <laughs> so what comes after one, then? Well, We're getting to the end of your list. These are, these are the last two, so... When I say the uh, the second best Star Wars movie, you're going to know what the first is. So, Episode 6 it is second. Yeah. I, I, can, I, I don't even need to make any point about it. That I agree completely. The, there's nothing you have to say about Episode 6. It's just a great movie. I rewatch yeah. Episode 6 when I'm bored, actually. It's one of those, <laughs> which sounds kind of bad, but like it, it always kind of draws my attention. It's just so powerful. I always feel so much genuine happiness once I'm done. Like once it's done, it's it's uplifting. It's the end of the saga. There's some great scenes in that movie. And for the time that it came out, oh man, great movie. Absolutely oh, yeah. great movie. So, obviously, my number one pick for best Star Wars movie made is Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Right. This is the movie that I can, I can recite word for word the entire movie. <laughs> the entire three hours. <laughs> I'll just be sitting in my room, and all of a sudden I'll start quoting it for no reason. <laughs> to myself <laughs> nobody's there it's just me talking <laughs> to myself quoting star wars yeah <laughs> it's, it's good we have some humor in here we haven't had a good we haven't had many jokes this might not be the most entertaining i mean for people that aren't big into star wars but well, that's I mean, funny when we, when we start talking about star wars uh yeah we're i mean i heart star wars fans so yeah it, it's just such a great movie series but I guess that leads TV into show, movies, books, games. I guess that leads into my list. Um, number uh, the last on my list is episode three. I just can't stand that movie. <laughs> <laughs> really now? No. I, forget, you're gonna have to find a new host. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Um. No, the last movie in my Star Wars list will be episode seven. I. You know, I love that movie, but I don't at all. <laughs> what I like about the movie is the fact that it was the first Star Wars I saw in theaters when I was yeah. just a youngster. That's um, a good point. And there will always be the emotions that come with that movie, That, but that is the only thing that I feel towards that movie. It is a direct ripoff, a fan fiction of, of episode four. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And it leaves a lot of unanswered questions, which it should, as a first, you know, installment to a three-part saga. But its questions it left were too vague to begin with for questions to, like, really get an answer to in two movies. Yeah. I get what you're saying with that. Um, I wish that they wouldn't have ended it on the planet that I can't remember the name of. I couldn't even tell you how that movie ends. I, I just, She shows up on the planet that Luke is on. Oh, And then yeah. they just cut away. And, they, and he doesn't say a word. And he doesn't say a word. He just turns around and it cuts away on Rey holding the lightsaber out to Luke. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely and should. It's another two years before you figure out what the fuck happens. Yeah. Yeah, that was aggravating. I loved to see Mark Hamill, though. 
amazing. I remember watching breakdowns of episode seven to prepare for episode eight. The good old days. Um, but the next one, oh, uh, next one in my list, it's going to be the Clone Wars movie. Not Attack of the Clones, but the animated. Um, I love Clone Wars, the TV show. No doubt about that. If I had to rank TV shows, it'd be in my top five. Um, oh, yeah. The movie, though, like I said earlier, um, I was a kid. Uh, I didn't like the whole plot of Jabba's son because it kind of seemed like it was... Dave Filoni, I don't know what the idea was there because you never hear about Jabba's son in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's just kind of like a, it was a, we it was weird. I didn't like that. I didn't like that, um, you know, Ahsoka was almost just kind of like toying with Anakin, even though being playful about it, but realistically it, it, he's the chosen one and like everyone knows that at that, by that point. So it's like, I don't know, more of a big deal, but it is for kids and when i was a kid i was probably ecstatic because it was a new star wars thing and i was there for it but um looking back on it i just rewatched it actually recently with anna my younger sister and for you viewers um and it was you know i i was just bearing through it <laughs> Nothing to say past that. Okay. Right, so after the Clone Wars movie, I think um, it's definitely going to be episode 8. Alright, a um, little my, higher than I put it. Well, my pick for episode 8, specifically in this part, is just I enjoy... A lot of the scenes in it. I liked the build up to it. Um, but there's still stuff I dislike about it. It's another one of those movies where I'm not going to go back and rewatch unless I really want to. Um, primarily, I, I about, I felt like a hit in my stomach when Luke threw his father's lightsaber over his shoulder. Yeah, I didn't understand that. That didn't. I didn't think that would be in Luke's character to do that. It was his father's blue lightsaber. Oh, it, it, it's it churns my stomach to think about it. But <laughs> some vocab. <laughs> that's why you like it so much. Yeah, it's just. But the Yoda scenes, the Force ghosts, the tree burning, the ancient Jedi texts, Luke's X-wing, the the similarities to Dagobah, the Force vision of projecting himself, um, and I think this is where it gets controversial. I actually enjoy Luke's death. I think him looking to the setting suns. Of the Dyad Sons, it's beautiful. I love it. And the Force was... theme playing in the background, it's just amazing. What did you think of him using the Force to project himself to have the fight with Kylo? I liked it. It was a show of raw strength and power. Um... Something that only the son of a Skywalker could do. And it was just amazing. I enjoyed it. Which, here's where I feel like you might start arguing with me. Actually, no. No, that not yet. But uh, next is episode four. Middle of the road. You know. It is what okay. it is. I mean, it's Star Wars. Yeah, it's Star Wars. You watch it. <laughs> but here is where I think uh, you'll argue with me. Um, that, my next pick is Episode 1. 
Um, primarily just because I don't like young Anakin. Uh, it's cr- it's it's crucial, crucial for the story. But it is just not my favorite Star Wars to watch either. And it doesn't even have to do with Jar Jar Binks. It really doesn't. But, uh, no, there's just a bit of it. Like, you know, there's certain parts of the movie where you're like, oh, yeah, can't wait. And you're waiting for those parts throughout the movie, if that makes sense. Like, you know what's going to happen, but you just, you, you got to wait for them. I also really dislike, um,. Pretty much most of the Naboo scenes, they uh, they uh, they they just don't do it for me. And the Gungans yeah. as a whole are just silly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Gungans, they're silly people. They're silly. Super. Off now. <laughs> oh man. Uh, next picks up. No like uh, the Naboo. <laughs> Oh, you do not like a. <laughs> well, um, I think with that way to speak for him, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, next pick is episode two. All right. Um, still high on the list. Uh, crucial to the story. Geonosis is and Django are really what put it at its highest. Um, my biggest thing is just how dirty they did Django in the script, but it does give the beginnings of of Boba, and that's that's uh that's crucial. Um, also Christopher Lee, amazing, but of course he's better yeah. in another movie, which we'll get to. Um, Willy Wonka. Nah, Willy Wonka, the best Star Wars movie. Count Dooku's origin. <laughs> did you know Count Dooku used to be a dentist? No, did not. I also knew he was Lord Dracula for a bit, but then they just thought it was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> a legend. Yeah, he is. He may, may he rest in peace. But yeah, he's a legend. He's in a lot of good movies. Remember, we used to think our neighbor was. Uh, yeah. Christopher oh Lee. man, I genuinely thought my neighbor was Count Dooku. Like every time we saw him outside, we were like, "That's got to be Count Dooku." Spitting image of Christopher Lee, and he hasn't aged since we were like kids. He looks the exact Let's same. Let's get him on the podcast. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I don't know how well he would talk. That would be the gardening episode where we talk about. This, this is our neighbor Jim. Yeah. <laughs> we used to think he was a character in Star Wars. Yeah, so you could tell we were shit. addicted, you know. And then when we would see him, we would kind of like always like make noises like Star Wars to see if he would like recognize we were making Star Wars noises and see if he would use his Force abilities. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the my truly wonderful the mind of a child is. Yeah. Uh, all right. After episode two, I'm gonna put episode five. I love Hoth. I love Cloud City. Boba Fett. Boba Fett's my favorite character. I mean, I'm a fan. Sure. And I, there's not much more I can say. I, I really enjoy episode five. Memes that come out of it. The Rocky montage with Yoda and like uh, and Luke and R2 just in the background wobbling back and forth. Good right. movie. I have two Empire Strikes Back posters, and it's, <laughs> it's also gives some more of the uh, trying to redeem himself, Vader, because he failed with the Death Star in Episode Four. After Episode Five, though, we're gonna put, um, let's see here, what's left? Uh, you, you still have Rogue One, Solo. You have oh, I forgot three. about Solo. <laughs> Episode we're gonna six. jump back down on the list we're gonna put solo right above episode eight um i totally forgot that one's a i do like solo solo's good for its own movie actually below episode eight i like episode eight a bit more um solo is good 
but it definitely could be better. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> I 100% agree with you on that. Um, my biggest thing about Solo is the antagonist just isn't, I don't want to say good enough, but like, just isn't there for me. I mean, who would you consider the antagonist in the movie? Drayden, Dryden Voss is his name? Uh, I mean, because they, they kind of tried to make Woody Harrelson the bad guy. Woody Harrelson's more of just like the mentor that just teaches Han. Straight to the end. Even at the end when he, you know, kills him. Spoiler alert. Uh, he's still mentoring him. He's just, this is the game, kid. Yeah. Um, he, did, he really didn't have much to do in the movie. Yeah. Voss. Dryden Voss was just the all-time bad guy. He was just kind of there. Yeah. That's why it's below episode 8. Um, not above. Still good. Still better than 7. <laughs> Uh, all right. So that brings us back to the top of the list. Um, that leaves me nine. My number one and two, which I won't spoil because I already have them planned out in Rogue One. Uh, I'm gonna put Episode Nine next. Um, Palpatine is another one of my favorite characters in Star Wars, but again, just doesn't really do it for me in nine. Um, a lot of nine is just let's fill up the plot holes. Yeah, I think they noticed that people weren't liking the sequel trilogy, so they were like, "Oh, we got to do something." Palpatine. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, there was the um, factor of they introduced way too many new characters in the last movie of the saga. Um. I get the droid was used by a Sith like Inquisitor type deal. Um, Dio. Yeah. He did Dio. I there was no need to have you know the whole character development of him. Uh, there was that chick with the um, the gold helmet that looks like Daft Punk. Um, no need for character development with her besides getting to Babu Freak, who's probably one of my favorite characters in episode 9, where he's just like, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Babu Freak is probably, you know, he is the real Sith Lord behind it all. He orchestrated the Clone Wars behind <laughs> Palpatine. He was pulling the strings. Did he now? <laughs> yeah. It's was canonized. He, was, was he was he higher or lower than Jar Jar? Uh, he actually, you know, those two beady eyes that Jar Jar has. Those oh, were kind of like the Ratatouille like constructs that he pulled to or, to move Jar Jar around. Gotcha. So he was inside of Jar Jar. Yeah, just sitting in his sinus cavity, pulling like like Men in Black. Yeah, ex- exactly like Men in Black. <laughs> just a tiny little being inside the head of the much bigger humanoid looking yes. person. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh. After that, Rogue One. The Death Star is completely nostalgic for me, and I absolutely adore it. Um, one of my favorite things. I love, uh, dirt, like gritty movies, um, like Save It Private Johnson or Private Johnson. (laughs) Sorry. Save It Private Ryan. Sorry. Um, the first predator. (laughs) Save It Private Johnson. (laughs) Um, Save It Private Ryan. Uh, I like in the original predator where you get like that dirty, like esque of the war i like uh kind of completely different off topic skull kong skull island is set during the vietnam war um right at the end of it um where the u.s doesn't really win but it's just they're just bringing their troops home um but uh was the original king kong set at the exact same time because i don't remember it being no um just the legendary universe um so the new one is the only one set during. Yeah, the- um, I forget who makes the original Kong with Jack Black in it. 
original Kong and with Jack Black is set during World War One, I, I think. Yeah, it's the Roaring Twenties. So, yeah, around World War One, um, more of the Roaring Twenties. I think it's like 1930 actually, because it's right after. Not after, because it's still during, but like the recuperation period of um, the Great Depression. But that's still the technology. They haven't developed right into World War II technology yet, but they're still in the like the midst of it. But um, 1933. 1933, I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sorry, back on track. Um, so now. You're up to. My number two is Revenge of the Sith. I love Revenge of the Sith, and it's kind of hard to put it in the second position, but I love the other movie more. I love the prequels to death. I love episode three to death, and it has the most action, but... Still my thing about my thing about revenge i'm oh, sorry go ahead i'm cutting you off still waiting for that four hour release He's still waiting for the four hour release <laughs> um my thing about episode three though is i watch it for the story and the entertainment and how great it is but if i wanted to like there's there's so much emotion that comes with that movie because that is like the pinnacle of Star Wars as a kid that was like great that was like the highlight the what you base your pretend off of what you base like your your character on Knights of the Old Republic on it's just like th- that you highlight that as like the peak of Star Wars but then we get to my number 1 pick Return of the Jedi and that movie is just so uplifting and it's the perfect hero story. And, you know, my my parents, like, raised me on watching, you know, them in order. So when I watched 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you finally get the 6, and you're like, the story is over, the battle is done, and the heroes have won. And it's just great. It's great. You know, and then 7, 8, 9, but... <laughs> but it's just great. I I think Return of the Jedi is my top pick, and that concludes my Star Wars list. I I think it's funny our uh, our top two picks were both the exact same, just flipped. Yeah, right hand in hand. And like if I could put them both on the same pedestal, I would, I would, because they're both great movies, and they will always be my top two. And it may, they're always subject to change when it comes to the context of the list. But if it's just my personal favorite rankings, I, w- I love watching Return of the Jedi. It is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, they're, they are just great. <laughs> there's, there's our uh, rankings for Star Wars movies, worst to best. Put for those the, who uh, ask, comments, <laughs> uh, hero ranking, hero oh, ranking, no. or just no, I want to see their ranking. Uh, oh yeah, ranking. yeah. In the comments below, rank your favorite Star Wars movies. Um, of course, you know, if, you know, Revenge of the Sith or Return of Jedi aren't there on the top. You know, get out of here. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna blacklist you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perma ban. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Feel free to comment. Um, You're accepting of everybody as long as you don't say episode eight is the best. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, though. Uh. So another one I saw uh, comments wise is good guys. Um. So Caleb, who is your favorite protagonist? And I don't know. We'll limit it to move. We'll do uh your favorite movie, your favorite game. And all-time favorite protagonist in any me- media. Sorry. Favorite protagonist in... So, favorite protagonist in a movie, favorite protagonist in a game. And then favorite all-time. 
Oh, that's a hard one. So who is your who is your movie favorite? God, it's such a difficult question. I think I'd have to go with like Shrek. <laughs> Shrek's a pretty cool. Shrek. <laughs> Shrek is the media, for, or Shrek is the uh, movie protagonist. Nah, Boog from Open Season. Boog. <laughs> Boog. <laughs> and Elliot. Oh, you just opened up a, a vault in my mind. Inside, outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my favorite protagonist in a movie would probably be Will Smith in Independence Day. That's a very good pick. Not who I thought you were going to say. But a very good pick. Who were you thinking I was going to go with? Hayden Christensen in uh, episodes two and three of Star Wars. <laughs> I, I love Hayden Christensen. But he's definitely one, not a... One of I'm, my favorite actors, but he's not... Yeah, he's not really. The best protagonist. Because, I mean, he turns into a bad the, guy. The, yeah, the bad guy of bad guys. <laughs> the bad guy. Yeah. Um, Protagonist in... My uh, my my personal favorite movie is Godzilla: King of the Monsters, and I can't say Godzilla is my favorite protagonist. But um, uh, in terms of heroes, that is a hard question. Uh, actually, one of my one of my other all time favorite movies is Shawshank Redemption, and I think Andy Dufresne in that movie you're kind of rooting him on the entire time and he might not be a protagonist you know he's not the necessarily the hero but i think that is one of my favorite uh protagonist roles so a little off topic but uh f9's in theaters tonight oh Nod to the first uh, podcast episode. Callback. Oh, no. Well, viewers, if you go and see F9, let us know if you actually get to see John Cena or if he's invisible throughout it all. You know, because he you, you can't see him. His time is now. You know that. <laughs> Jacob with the K. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> So, so I went with Will Smith in Independence Day, and you went with who? Andy Dufresne. I don't know his actor's name, but from Shawshank Redemption. Those aren't bad picks. So now we're going with video game protagonist. Yeah, who is your video game top pick? This one is a very easy answer. Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect games. Really? I, I ha love the Mass Effect games. Even the not as great Andromeda, but the first three games where he plays Commander Shepard, I there's something about the games, the storytelling, the overall story, the characters, the way that you get to decide pretty much everything within the game makes Commander Shepard my favorite protagonist in any game. Hmm. You know, that wasn't what I was expecting you to say. But, uh, again, again. <laughs> um, I'm full of surprises. <laughs> yeah, full of them. Uh, next, or mine, shit. Uh, I'm stuck. Uh, between two. Here are your two that you're stuck between? No, I'm going to just pick one. But this is this is one that's going to be a little weird because you're going to be expecting me to say someone else. So from the Halo series, one of my favorite protagonists is Cortana. 
Um, not a bad pick. I like Cortana because not only is she like the guide throughout Halo, of course, but she is, you know, very uh, important to the story as it is. Especially with Halo Infinite coming up at the end of this year. And you best believe we'll have some gameplay of that in the background or something. Because I, we both can't wait. We're going to make a second channel for gaming. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> just for... play games there. Just for Halo Infinite. That's yeah, the only game purely. I'm play <laughs> but uh, Cortana is one of those characters where it's like... You see, you see her when she's brand new in Reach. And you have to deliver her to the Master Chief. You see her in one when she's your guide, and two in your guide, and then she sacrifices herself for once, the first time, to stop the flood on the Covenant ship that I can't remember. High Charity, I think is what it's called. But um, in three, you have to go and save her while she's corrupted by the flood. And, you know, you see the errors that are occurring because of it. And... She's like the best friend as you're... Because you are the Master Chief when you play Halo, you know? Yeah. And she's your best friend along the whole way. And one of, you know, one of the protagonists. And it's like one of the greater characters in video game history, I think. And of course, she is the uh, Microsoft equivalent of Fury. So my MacBook doesn't go crazy. But uh, yeah, Cortana, you know, it's one of those things. So, speaking of Halo, have you seen the newest uh, trailer for Halo Infinite? I have, yeah. It looks what great. What are your thoughts on New Cortana, otherwise known as the weapon? New Cortana is, like I said, it's one of those things where it's like, Chief knows that she's not the original, and I wonder if we'll see the original Cortana. And that, that, that best friend that you kind of play through the games with is also the antagonist while still in your head at the same time. It's kind of weird. It's going to be cool. I'm excited for it. I I thought it was funny that they put more clothes on the AI to be PC. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Cortana was pretty much naked the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, she's an AI. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really have any parts. She Naked Cortana has her. been around oh, forever, you know. <laughs> Bring back Naked Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can see I the guess. riots now. We'll we'll have to see how the game turns out and the story around it. Um from what I saw that I'm I'm excited to see how an open world Halo game would happen. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's gonna have a Far Cry mechanic. aesthetic. I feel looks awesome. Oh yeah, like when in the trailer when they grapple the uh, fusion coil and then throw it. Oh, it's amazing! It's fusion cool. coils now have an actual fucking reason to be there. <laughs> instead Besides of just blowing, blowing up you your up friends by random with random nades. <laughs> yeah. I saw the clip with the energy sword too, grappling the energy sword and and then the igniting it. Yeah, is looking real good. The shinobi samurai armor. Oh, that's all, all the armor that they've shown so far. Yeah, it has a very Halo Reach um esque like outfit system. I feel, which is great because I loved Halo Reach's um Spartan. Oh yeah, design. Halo Reach's customization was better than any Halos. Yeah, for Bungie's last game, they went all out, and it was great. I mean, even Halo 4 and Halo 5 didn't have the level of customization that reached it. Yeah, no, it didn't. Halo 5 has some pretty good customization, too, but it's all RNG. Yeah. I mean, you have the uh, fries... Yeah. Gun camo <laughs> that I have on my pistol. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for gun camos to come back in uh in Infinite. I really enjoyed that. Oh, I enjoyed that about Call of Duty too. Of gun camos because my mind can't stay on one topic. Um 
I never told you this, but Borderlands 3 has gun camos that you can unlock. Oh, cool. And put on your guns as well as uh, charms you can put on. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I have a diamond ponytail on my shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the It's Poo camo. <laughs> Man. I mean... Each Borderlands game takes the customization up too. Like the first one, there was just colors. The second one was, you know, headgears and colors. And then now the third one is headgears, colors. Now there's also new, like full on new bodies that you can put on. Jeez. Yeah, that completely changed the outfit. There's only one for each Vault Hunter, though, right now. Yeah, I assume that they're going to add more, but they might not. They might just add them in the next one because 4 is confirmed that they're working on 4 right now. Yeah. Is that the Bunkers and Badasses one? No, that's a spinoff. It's going to be Tiny Tina's spinoff game for Borderlands. And from what I've heard of it so far... Uh, you're going to be able to create your own Vault Hunter. There's not going to be a preset I know, That's going to be great. I'm really excited for that, actually. I'm a, f yeah. I'm a freak for customization. So. Yeah, I love being able to create my own character. Yeah, getting the customer or customer uh, character creation. What is your um, favorite game for character creation? Like, what, what is the peak? And I swear to God, I, that was a stupid question because I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yep. I can create a man with a woman's body. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I not don't, to mention, you know, at a uh, nod to the last nudity. episode, uh, a tongue for a dick, you know, or a dick for a tongue. <laughs> yes, you, it's got the most in-depth character creation. I wouldn't say it's like the best because there's not a lot of options. But it's definitely the most in depth. Right. Like to the point where you can change your pubic hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that kind of. I don't know. Is that today's episode? How long we've been recording? I we're pretty. I think we're even um, encroaching on the two hour mark. Really? Yeah. Um, we should, we should probably outro this one. Yeah. Uh, probably not the most entertaining episode, folks. It it, it is our opinion, though. This is what you requested for. Um, <laughs> that you we're asked gonna, for this. <laughs> we're gonna try to uh, fulfill as many requests from our viewers as possible. Mm hmm. So if you have a topic or something that you'd want us to discuss on a future episode, let us know either on our Discord, on the YouTube comments, or through our email, uh, and we'll try to get that done. Right righto. right -o. Um, Link in the description for the newly set up Discord. Uh, feel free to join. Um, Instagram is all set up. Log in there. I'm posting every time we get uh, a new video. Uh, new videos about to upload. Um, and when the video is uploaded, <laughs> correspond other contact or uh, other information too. Um, we have some new subscriber goals too. Uh, once we get to 50, we will be giving away Couchcast t-shirts. You want to talk about that for a minute before we uh, cut this off? Uh, yeah, so, um, we're going to make some t-shirts, uh, specifically 10 t-shirts. They're going to be first come, first serve. So whoever wins in the drawing, uh, once we get to 50 subscribers, it's going to have our logo, our newly made logo on it. Uh, we're not completely sure about the design yet. We have to go in and figure out where we need to make them and stuff right like on. that. But we'll share a picture on the Instagram once we get the logos made. Mm -hmm. Well, the t-shirts made. Yeah, the t-shirts. The logo is going to be the same as our <laughs> symbiote creature that is on them. Uh, with the couch cast lettering. Um, we haven't actually decided what the actual um, 
competition will be, but we will let you know. Uh, be sure, though, if you do win, make sure you get a few pictures with the uh, with shirts on, and we will include it at the beginning of our podcast. Yep. A little slideshow for you. A little 10 seconds of fame or something, you know? Should, uh, <laughs> should, should we put the, uh, the 100 sub goal out there, just so they know? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they're ready for that yet. You know, the the face reveal. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred sub face reveal, and after that, we'll start doing full on live videos where we're sitting there. You're gonna see us. There's gonna be actual video to watch. So the video, the video uh, listeners will actually have something to view. <laughs> um, after this episode today, we will be on Apple Podcast as well. Um, Couchcast, of course. You'll know how to find us. You'll see our logo. We'll have links in the Instagram, the YouTube. Right, right. Also the Discord. The Discord. Make sure you check that out. Well then, of course, this has been the Couchcast podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And a little hint to next week's. Caleb, What's what are we doing? Or not next week's. What are we doing this Thursday? All right, so this Thursday we have an exciting show for you. Uh, we're going to be doing our first ever interview um, with somebody who's not us. Somebody that's not us. It'll be an exclusive. It'll be great. Yeah. There, <laughs> may, there may or may not be some, uh, some content on the show as well from not us. Yeah. Some so, unreleased content. It'll be great. Tune in. Uh, we'll have an interview. We'll BS. It'll be a good show. Right on. Well, this has been the Couchcast Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Catch you around.